Having been so impressed with this 26cc Buku chainsaw that I bought recently, I've decided to replace my bigger chainsaw with this 65cc Buku chainsaw with a 20 inch bar. So 10 inch bar, 20 inch bar, let's have a look at the new one. Okay, this is the one that we're replacing. Uh, it served me well. I've probably had it for about 20 years and the background to it is when I was, uh, when we were building the house, I needed to notch out the joist to take the underfloor heating. And uh, that was what I used. Absolutely fantastic. If you've never used a chainsaw, they save so much time and are so easy to use. So let's get this opened anyway. We'll see what it comes with. We'll put it together and then we'll see it in operation. Out of the box, we've got the 20 inch bar and the protector. We've got a face shield, which I'll pop together later. Ear protectors, pair of gloves, a filling nozzle, eye protectors, a mixing bottle. We've got one, two, three. Got four chains, which is absolutely fantastic. A tool kit for putting it together and doing all the adjustments and everything. A bag for it to go in when you finish with it to protect it when it's in the garage. And last but not least, we've got the chainsaw itself now just looking at this so we've got a 16 inch bar that comes with it which i didn't realize and also a 20 inch bar i'm going to set it up with a 20 inch bar not the 16 but it's good to know that we've got that okay we'll get it assembled now um have a look at the tool kit once it's assembled i'll have a walk around it and you can see what it comprises of just something to take into account because we've got the 16 inch bar and the 20 inch bar uh, the four chains you've got 216 and 220. first thing we'll do take the bar out take the bag off it have a quick look at this so there's your cogs to guide it pop that there and then we'll have a look in the toolkit and see what there is so we've got a spur spark plug we've got a file to sharpen it if that's what you want to do i prefer either to get new chains or to get somebody to sharpen it for me this will go on the front there and then just a few other bits and pieces right let's get it together i'm going to start by taking these two nuts off you get this supplied so it's simply a case of pop that on and undo it do the same with the other and take those off and what that should do it should release this casing then all right so that's the casing off so here we're left with the clutch two bolt uh, two bolts there which the bar is going to fit on so that's the next thing we need to do and pop that on its side We'll get the bar and we'll pop that over there like so. We're going to get a 20 inch chain, open that up. Now obviously the chains are directional so you need to make sure it goes on the right way and just to show you you've got a picture there which shows you which way the chain's got to go on so if you follow that you can't go wrong. This is always one of the, the tricky bits to undo the chain. Right, that's the chain dub. So we just need to make sure that it's going in the same direction as this. And that's the direction. Even if you didn't have the picture, you can see that that's the cutting edge there. So if that's the direction of the chain, 
then obviously that's the way that it goes. And then once you've figured out the direction, put the bar into place, get the chain, feed it over the flywheel at the back, up through the side guides of the bar, right so that's that it's over the bar and then we'll pull the bar out all right so that's the bar and the chain in place but as you can see it's all loose so you've got no tension in the bar in the chain whatsoever now when we put the front plate back on you can see there there's a screw and that screw moves this pin and that pin sits into one of these holes and as you screw it it will either create tension or it'll remove tension so that's the next stage let's get the front plate on just a couple of things to mention before we uh, before we finalize this the first one is this brake here it needs to be as open as possible and if you have a look on the front here it shows that it needs to be pulled back because the brakes on when it's forward and it's off when it's back and we need that to be as big as possible so you see it just opened up then so we'll do it the other way it's closed up so that's your brake and we need to open it up and we also need to make sure that we've got this in place as well so we'll get this pop it into place and then just put the bolts in And then once they're in, we'll use the supplied Allen key just to tighten those up. That's that in place. Get the bar, pop it back over. Get the chain, and again, making sure it's on the right direction. Over the back. Run it up the guides. And then put the face plate back on. Right, so that's done, put the nuts on and then we'll adjust the tension with the screw so that the chain sat perfectly on the bar. Right, now you don't want to over tighten these until you've got this right. So we need to start screwing. Okay, so we've got this screwdriver just to make things a little bit easier and we're just going to start turning it. This is going to move the bar up so we get tension in it. Right, okay, so that's enough slack in there. Maybe just one more turn. Right, absolutely perfect. If it's over tight, your chain won't go round. If it's too loose, then your chain will just come off. So, I say, about half an inch of slack is fine. And then, we need to tighten these up. Right, so they're all tightened. And the chain's got enough play in it to work properly so chainsaw all assembled next thing to do get it filled with fuel prime it and um and we'll see it in action we're going to use this filling bottle uh, so obviously because it's a two-stroke engine you need to put oil in the in the uh, fuel so we're going to fill it up to the one liter mark there and then these guides basically you fill the rest up with the oil and it gives you the mixture that you want so if you fill it up to that line it's 50 to 1 if you fill it up to that line it's 25 to 1 and the instructions with this book who is it should be 25 to 1 so that's what we're going to do or thereabouts right pull some back in Perfect. Right, so we've got the fuel in up to the fuel level and we've got the two stroke oil, which we're just going to top up now up to that 25 to one mark. There we go. That's that done. Give it a shake and we're ready to go. Right, everything's set up there. Now, just need to put the fuel in. There's two filling points on this, just like there are on every other chain so that I've used. You've got your fuel filler there and then here you've got your chain oil filler and obviously the lubrication oil is, is purely and simply for the chain there but let's get the let's get the fuel put in it first 
Right, so there's the fuel. Something that we've got to do before we start it, other than put the fuel filler cap back on, is if we have a look. Oops, there's it. If you see this here, that's your primer pump. And basically you've put your fuel into the tank, but there's nothing getting to the carburetor. So you need to push that a few times and you will see that it then fills up with fuel. So we've got the fuel there, so we should now be able to start it. All filled up, uh, changed out my shorts into some jeans for a little bit of safety. Obviously there's, there's other things that you can use as well. So although I'm not um, a salesperson for Buku, what, I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly actually, but what I have found is that they are fantastic for starting. So as I said, um, the 10 inch chainsaw, this one, there's the three in one strimmer, etc., and there's also the uh, backpack mounted blower, all petrol and all started and continue to start excellently. So let's, let's see what this one's like. So prime it, which I've already done, pull out the chalk. There's a, a, an on switch on the left hand side. And let's see what happens. Now push the chalk in. Right, this has never been used. Uh, took a, a couple of pulls to get it going, but it works perfectly. So there's no messing around. And as I said, some of the uh, petrol tools that I've got, absolutely horrendous. You can be there for, for half a day trying to start them, taking a the spark plug out, just doing all sorts of bits and pieces. But that started first time. Let's go up into the woods and uh, we're not going to chop any trees down because it's the wrong time of year, but this is here in preparation or if something happens, if one of the trees falls over. Okay, off we go. Obviously we're taking the, the chainsaw up with us. Nothing nicer than coming up here in the uh, in the sunshine. I think we'll chop some of that fallen tree there. Now that, that fell a few years back so it's going to be really hard in wood so we'll see what it's like on that. Okay here we are. Right so we'll get it started again. Again switch it on make sure it's primed. I don't think I'll need the chalk out because we've just had it running. <laughs> Just before I, I use it, uh, if you've never had a chainsaw before and you're a bit concerned, this is a safety guard here. So with it back like that, the, the brake isn't on the chain. However, if you get a kick and it comes up, then that's going to happen. And when it does, that's the, the brake on the drive there. So to use it, make sure it's pulled back. And then obviously if you have the accident, clicks forward and it, and it breaks. So back again. Right, now, as I've said, this is really, this is really seasoned timber. So very, very hard. It cut through it, no problem whatsoever. Uh, and we're all ready now for when the leaves come off as we're approaching winter, I can do all my felling then. If you live anywhere where there's trees, don't be reliant on your neighbors to have a chainsaw. All my neighbors, none of them have chainsaws. And you never know when you're actually going to need one. Two years ago, a tree on the left-hand side fell over during a storm and blocked the road. Now, you've got two options when that happens, or three options. First option is you get your handsaw out and it takes forever. Uh, second option is you call somebody out and they charge an arm and a leg to, to move it. Or the third option, 
I just went and got a chainsaw, did it all myself. I had the road cleared in no time. The in summary part of the video. So in summary, for 120 or 130 pounds, an excellent chainsaw. 65cc, more than powerful enough to run a 20 inch bar. If you want something a bit smaller, well, there's the 10 inch one and uh, I'll put the link into the video that I did for that below. I'll also put the link into this below as well. Um, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Perfect starting, does exactly what it's supposed to do. And seriously, if you live anywhere where there's trees, you need a chainsaw. Uh, or even if you, you don't live where there's big trees, if you get something small like this, just a, a battery powered chainsaw, just does the pruning fantastically. So do I recommend Bucco? Yes, I do. Do I recommend this particular 20 inch bar? Yes, I do. And I bet the 16 inch is even better. Obviously I haven't tried that yet. The 10 inch one, fantastic. If I'd have had that when I was notching out for the underfloor heating, oh, it'd have just saved so much time. It's almost a, a one-handed chainsaw. So yeah, that's it. Can't recommend it highly enough. And make sure you use chain oil. It will last so much longer. Bit messy, but it'll last longer.